everybody, I'm Cassandra, and I wanted to take a little break from the tornado vlogs and disaster details to do a lighter, a fun Ozark history story. And I'm going to talk about an aspect that is not as well known because it was never really um, played up in the tourism that developed around Branson, and that is the Ozark magic, folklore, water witches, um, granny women, seers, and fortune tellers of the Ozarks. And for the most part, this is a kind of, if you know, you know, sort of thing. Um, if you have grown up around the Ozarks, you will probably have heard of some of this. And uh, most families keep it close to their chest. And I'm certainly not going to tell everything here either. Just share some information that's interesting and already publicly available that may not be known to you. One of the first mentions in early 1900s history of uh, magical people in the Ozarks is about the mountain maids. The most well-known one was Jean Wallace. People would come to see her. She came and settled um, after working in a hospital in New York. The legend is that she was born on a pier in New York, and she worked in a hospital there, and the legend is that her second sight, as it's called in the Ozarks, her psychic abilities were so strong that she couldn't stand being in New York City and feeling the, all the pain and seeing all the um, tragedies that were about to happen around her. So when the Ozarks opened up for settlement, she came and settled by Roaring River. Roaring River is a beautiful place, and if you've ever been there, I'll put a picture of it up here. Um, it's really easy to understand why a magically-minded person would be drawn there. The Roaring River Springs, a beautiful waterfall-type thing. It has uh, crystal blue waters underneath. There are trout farms around it now. There's a... Um, I believe it's known as Devil's Peak uh, that can be climbed there. I'll put a correction up if I'm wrong. And there's also um, a legend of a cave known as Abbott's Cave. And that cave was thought back in the day to have Confederate gold hidden in it. And um, there were two brothers, and they went in trying to find that Confederate gold, and they never came out. They got lost in the side of the mountain. Uh, the legend is that the town pulled together all of the string, all the string yarn type um, material rope that could be found in town and made as long a one as possible for men to go as far into the mountain as they could with the spring, string allowing them to come back. After quite some time, the city decided to block in that cave so that no one else could get lost in there. Decades later, they actually decided to unblock it, but could no longer find the location. So that's kind of a mystery cave with um, two long lost brothers and Confederate gold right there at Roaring River, where Miss Jean Wallace lived. And uh, like I said, Miss Jean Wallace is pretty well known, but she wasn't the only one. There was another lady, Mrs. Olson, who also came from New York. Uh, she was Jean's friend there. They worked at a hospital together, and she was also known to be very magically minded, have the second sight. People came to her as well to get their fortunes read. When she died, she went back to New York for her funeral, and she had what was known as a theosophical funeral. Now, if you've ever studied any um, occult-type things in America, uh, you will probably have heard of Madame Blavatsky and the Theosophical Society. This is what she was a part of while she was living in the Ozarks. And while she was, um, when she was moved back to New York, they had a Theosophical funeral for her. She was cremated and her ashes brought back to Roaring River. Now, unlike Miss Olson, Miss Jean Wallace was a devout Episcopalian, and um, made sure it was mentioned on her tombstone that uh, she was a devout believer in the Bible and a uh, devoted church member. And this was the same with most of my people, including my Granny Brown, who did her brand of mountain hoodoo, which I'll talk about later. Uh, she was a strong Pentecostal, uh, one of those, as May Kennedy McCord would say, one of those mystical Ozark Mountain Pentecostals. And um, they would never assert that any of the magical or mystical things came from anything other than the power of Jesus. That was their way of being okay with what they were doing. And they believed that. They believed that sincerely, that that absolutely came from the power of Jesus. And what do I know? Maybe it does. 
And one of the less exotic and more natural types of magic to the area was considered the water witches. And my grandpa did this. He, would, he did water witching because one of his businesses early on was well digging. He was a well digger for quite some time before he decided there would be more money in truck driving. Um, when he dug wells, he used the water witching method of cutting a stick, and he said it always needed, for him, needed to be from a willow tree. There are other families that choose different trees, and um, it works for them. It seems to be different for different families, but for Paul Brown, it was a willow tree, and he was taught how by his mom, Granny Brown, who was a granny woman of medicine. People would come to her to get warts removed, to have special prayers said for things like, you know, make their husband come back home, uh, make their cow start turning out milk again, and, um, you know, different things like that. She had a lot of different methods and ways that she went about doing things, and some of them didn't just involve processing medicinal healing herbs and dispensing them. They involved special prayers set at special places, uh, different ways of doing stuff, and Every um, family gathering that we have, someone always mentions Granny and her mountain hoodoo woman ways. Granny had the second sight, and she was amazing at predicting things. I remember being at my grandma's house, which would be Granny Brown's daughter-in-law, um, when Granny Brown called, and she's like, Janice, I've heard the death bell. There's going to be two men die, too. It's just here south. And within two days, two men had died. J.D. Talbert and Robert Little died just south of us. And, um, yeah, Granny was just accurate and on point like that. And now the death bell, that's a thing that's known throughout the Ozarks. And Mary Elizabeth Mankey actually mentioned the death bell in... Um, well, actually, it was Douglas Mankey that mentioned it in Bright Glowed My Hills. He told a story about his mother hearing the death bell. And uh, she described it as sounding like a church bell, even though there were no church bells for miles around. And then later, um, at the time that she heard it, she realized that two people in their small neighborhood of Mincy, Missouri, had died. There are some funny stories with Miss Jean Wallace of um, people who didn't believe uh, planning to go there and prove her a fraud. As they approached her door, um, the door flung open and she hollered something like, I ain't no fraud and you can get out of here. <laughs> I'll put up the quotes on to the side here so you can actually read them. But yeah, she um, people who come to see her without believing usually left believing and that's one of the differences in the um the magical practices of previous years versus today is most often today if something doesn't physically manifest the way that uh it's pretty oh hey dave <laughs> this is dave the tornado cat he was um he showed up we started feeding him about a week before the tornado then with Oh, Dave. When the tornado hit, uh, he disappeared. We didn't see him for a couple of days, and we thought he didn't make it. Then one morning, he was suddenly back out there, and we were so excited. So he has been fixed now. He's had his claws trimmed, a little vet appointment, and he's getting along great with the other cats. So Dave the Tornado Cat. The kids all also like to call him Dave the Magical Cheese Wizard, but he's Dave the Tornado Cat. <laughs> um... Anyway, to get back to what I was saying, okay, I was saying that, you know, most often today, if someone predicts something and it doesn't work out, like, they'll say, well, it must have applied to something spiritual or something non-physical, and, and sometimes that's correct, sometimes that's the case, but that wasn't the case with my ancestors. Um, like with Paul Brown and his water witching to find well water, digging wells was his business. If if it didn't work, he would go out of business. He would lose money. He would be, you know, working, digging himself and paying a crew. Um, uh, he would still have to pay them even if they didn't find water. So that was actually, it was a dependable method to find water. There are um, societies today that do it, and another term for it more commonly used in Appalachia than Ozarks is dousing. And uh, there are dousing societies today that go out finding water. Some of them use, um, like I said, different branches, different types of tree branches for different families. And some of them also use copper rods. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of 
evidence for it, even though no one can really explain just exactly how or why it happens. But uh, for them, these things were concrete. And if they didn't work, they stopped it immediately. <laughs> they didn't try and explain it another way because they would have, you know, like with Paul Brown's cases of digging a well, they would have just lost a lot of money, a lot of effort, a lot of time if he was incorrect. You can't talk about Ozark ghost stories without mentioning the Joplin spook light. People have been going to see the spook light for over a hundred years, and in um, May Kennedy McCord's book, she mentioned that back in her day, what she heard was that it was basically a headless horseman type tale with um, it being a Civil War soldier, sometimes Union, sometimes Confederate, depending on who was telling it. So, uh, yeah, the spook light, still today, people go up, I think, I heard that the area had been blocked or something like that because of um, fear. Hey, stay down, buddy. <laughs> because of, um, I don't know, fear something. Vandalism, I don't know what's there. But uh, last I heard, the light would still show up right next to your car and go along beside you as you drive away and follow you and chase you for a while. So a lot of people I know have went and seen the spook light, a lot of family and friends. Well, that's all I've got for today on our Ozark ghost stories, fortune tellers, witchcraft stories. I hope you enjoyed and maybe you'll like and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs>